All right, hello and welcome to another weekly edition of Stock Market Mutterings, where I'll try to find you some quality trade setups and put a little bit of money in your pocket. As always, if you guys need help with your trading, take a moment, visit the LincolnList.com, click on the Trade Room tab, or I'll just post a link up here on the screen for your convenience. So if that's something that you're interested, go ahead and click on it. Now, one thing I would like to mention before I start with today's review is our mini camp course starts on Monday. In this course, I'm going to be talking about my four main stock trading strategies, my four main option trading strategies, and a bunch of other other stuff like scanning, how to build the right kind of watch list, risk, psychology, and everything in between. It's the most popular course that we have at the Lincoln List. I only do a couple of these a year. So I'm also going to post that link. If you guys are looking for a little bit of extra trader education, you want to go to that next level, go ahead and check it out and see if that's something that interests you. So we'll talk about the market here first because now it has broken yet again another level to the upside, albeit moving like a turtle and some of the action is extraordinarily slow throughout the days but you're just within 1% of all time high. So here we go back to, you know, just a few months ago there, 20% or more correction it was in the market, a pretty hefty sell off into Christmas Eve. But since that moment here, now we find ourselves just a few ticks away from all time highs. This just continues to be the theme over the last few years in the market. Every time you get a correction, it's immediately followed by all time highs or it feels that the market just beelines right back to it. In, in, in a roundabout way. So we saw that with Brexit. We saw that with the election. We saw that a couple of years ago. I think it was 2012 or 2013. I can't remember off the top of my head. But here we are again, just a few ticks away from that. Now, when I ask myself the question, what could possibly de deter this? What, what, what could come up that could stop this thing from eventually finding its way there? And I can't come up with a reason. Now, that doesn't mean there isn't one or one will not appear, but we haven't even finished this whole trade deal stuff that keeps being dangled in front of the market. I'm not sure how much that really matters at this time because there has been some economic data that's been released that hasn't been that good. You know, some of it's been disappointing, some of it has been good, but it doesn't matter. You know, some of these companies guided lower during their earnings last last quarter. It doesn't seem to be bothering anything. Whatever comes by, it just seems like the water off the duck's back. It keeps just rolling on up and finding a way to go up. And I imagine it will hang there until this trade deal is finally done or something is done. And you'll get a pop to all-time highs or through all-time highs, depending on the timing of such an event. And then we can kind of go from there. We also have earnings coming up over the next couple of weeks with some of the bigger names. That may put an impact on it. But for right now, if we're just talking about next week, I mean, maybe you get a pullback. Maybe you get a little bit of selling here and there. But it's still hard to make the case for not seeing all-time highs or at least a test of those all-time highs towards 292. Now, if you do sell, I don't think you're going to see anything that gets down below the 280s or 279s. Again, anything can happen. I don't have a crystal ball that works either. We just take it day by day, but just based on the way the tempo of this market, I think if you pull up a weekly chart, there might have only been two weeks. The market has been negative and only negative slightly. The rest has just been green. So if you bought every damn week at the very beginning, you'd be up handsomely so far this year. So we'll see how the remaining part works, but it still seems like this is going to turn out to be one monstrous V-shaped rally right back into October highs. And then we'll kind of go from there. Now we have some individual setups that look interesting, some things that look like they're ready to also break some range, and there are some short trade ideas here too, although the shorts just have been extremely stingy because I think we've lost a lot of volatility here, and even the stocks that are overbought just sort of trickle down slowly or just kind of camp out up towards their highs. I first want to take a look at, we'll look at Apple. This thing just keeps on clicking away here too. It's turned into quite a monster since the beginning of March. It just keeps going and going and going. Now you had this pretty big ramp up and we talked about a lot of these fang names like Facebook and this one needed a rest. We talked about Netflix and those and they did get that. They pulled back into their moving average, nice orderly pullbacks based here and now they've kind of slowly grinded up. The ones I'm looking at here are also lined up on the daily. So you're going to take a look at this real close. I'll lay this right on top of it. Where it closed on Friday is just right there at a, another daily chart range break. Above this, if it's able to trade above this, hold this level throughout the week, test this level, you know, you don't have anything really until you get into the gap right here from November, which is 204 and then somewhere towards 211. So you might very well see this thing move into $200 before the week is over. One of the things I mentioned about these, excuse me, 
is that while this market originally made a very strong rally, and it first had that throughout January, February, it was a lot of these FANG names like this one that were left behind. And I say left behind that, yes, they did bounce from their lows, but they did not even come anywhere near where they were trading at October. So when you go back and you look at the market making its way back to October highs, there's a lot of these stocks like this. They're not even close to October highs like and this is one of them I think Facebook might be another one don't quote me on that I'll pull up the chart but you know these things still have ranges to get back up there I, th I think you're going to see a cycle of money pull back in there nonetheless watch this I think you're going to see a $200 run here pretty soon on that one another one that kind of has that same look and feel to it maybe not, maybe not the same feel would be the old king King Baba one of my favorite stocks to trade Baba and you know this thing is kind of doing its thing as well it had a couple of days pull back bounces off the moving average right there and then you know it's just it's kind of laying right here to what appears to be a triple top on the daily so if you get a nice move above 186 again you're, you're going to see it I think a pretty big range break the reason for you go back you have some resistance that dates back to August's high so this is going to be something that really clears a longer piece of resistance and you, you're pretty you're pretty clean all the way up to maybe 199 to 200 on this. So there's two stocks right there that are trading up towards the 180s, Baba and Apple that look like possibly 200 is is on the table here in the near future. So watch those two. Now there's also a short idea here. I'd like to you know again I I have some short ideas, but to be honest with you, I just not really have done much shorting at all because. The, they just don't seem to be giving up much of their gains but I want to take a look at Baidu and there was a lot of one, one thing I mentioned Baba is there was a lot of strength in the Chinese stocks you saw stuff like Bizon, WB those other types everything was running this Baidu was running and Baba was just kind of sitting there for a couple of days before he got going this thing is is pretty ripe on the daily. I mean, this thing's made a, a big, big move here. 167 to like 180s here, where it sits just a little over 180s. That's a pretty big move for this. A lot of green days there in a row, a lot of stretch to it. Maybe if it gets a little bit more vertical and starts to push towards 185, there's a short there. Again, I'm really kind of backed a little ways off of the shorting, especially in these names, because it just doesn't seem to favor that even the ones that do pull back or you get some really hefty selling in like a shop or something they don't last very long so unless you get the perfect entry you seem to always be struggling with that and then most of them even when they sell off or they pull back it's a slow procedure and it's not really pulling back that deeply as far as price so they're running ten twelve dollars pulling back one running six seven more dollars pulling back one and that sort of thing and it just seems unless your, your timing is absolutely spot on you're struggling to get some of these to give you the kind of value that you need or the risk to reward is favorable so maybe you never know what can what can change in the market. You know, it might go through sell off period or correction period. You just you just never know. You need to be prepared for both sides. So maybe maybe Baba something there. And then the last I think I'll throw in this W day. There was a I, I think you're going to see a, a nice little shorter term bounce in the, in these names, especially if they can follow up with a little. I was kind of looking for a little more flush on these Friday to get long some of these. You saw this this really heavy selling on Thursday in some of these cloud names. You had Twilo, you had this W Day, and I can't think of my, but you had a couple others there that Splunk, I think. A lot of those names really got smashed there on Thursday. They were like bell to bell selling. I kind of wanted that to continue early on Friday and then try to pick them up though, but they just sort of like stopped. And again, this is what I go back to talking about shorting stocks in this market right now is that you get that move and then instead of following up with a little more panic or a little more selling everything just it just stops you know and you you, you just yeah you know, that's it it just it just stops so i think you're going to see a bounce on these i would obviously like a little bit more you can see where i've got some support lines drawn on this one i think 179 90 area right there would have been a good pickup or somewhere down in that support i was got an x drawn on there where i think is a really limit down spot I wanted to get long but it doesn't look like any of those are going to play in there you could probably put shop on that list it has a very similar chart been sold off for the last few days so I think I'm looking for those here as potential bounce candidates 
you know, after they, they, they finally got shaken down a little bit. Again, these are really, really strong stocks. have been in an incredible uptrends. And now you've gotten a pretty thick pullback. I'd like to see a little washout zone and then get the opportunity to kind of possibly long some of these. Anyway, we'll see how that works out. As always, if you guys need help, you know how to reach out to me. Don't forget about Minicamp that starts on Monday. As always, I want you to trade well this week. Take care, and I'll talk to you next week.